goodness, with face, pat, and tiz. Let's kick it straight into the positive black news. So the first story of the night on the news that uh, the cool black shit, the cool stuff that we are doing, experiencing, creating, and just living through, or that's happening for us. Um, and the first story tonight brings me pride because it's coming from Virginia. Hey. Go VA! Hey. Um, not only are we for lovers, but we're also for getting rid of Confederate names on side streets and other schools and monuments. Um, we so, had that shit. Um, it comes as a surprise to Mortram, to Mottram Drive resident Bo Patrick, Fitzpatrick that he lives on a street named for a Confederate soldier. Really? I always assumed that it was named for an apple or apple juice, he said, referring to the Mott's brand of apple products. In fact, the street in McLean, Virginia, not far from the nation's capital, is named for Mottram Delaney Ball, a captain in the Fairfax Cavalry who was among the first Confederate officers taken prisoner in the Civil War. So um, basically, in Fairfax County, they got a commission that's tasked with ferreting out the forgotten names of Confederate soldiers, and they're getting uh. rid of those uh, soldiers' names from side streets and monuments. Their sister county, Lawton, um, is also doing the same. So they are um, leading the efforts of Virginia and just kind of righting some of the wrongs of the past and kind of stopping that perpetual trauma. So shout out to Virginia, shout out to Fairfax and Lawton County. And those are two counties who really don't have to do it because they are the richest counties, two of the richest counties in America. So um, the fact that they're taking the time to do it, shout out to them. And um, i like to bring this up. Uh, only in privilege in America that you can lose and still get a prize for it. You get a street, you can get a statue, a statue for a loser. Um. Well, no lies detected, buddy. Yeah, that, that's pretty much how Rome, that, how that uh, works out. Yeah. Rome didn't build statues for losers. They eventually might have got killed later on, but they, 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 they won't America, lose America, the participation <sighs> trophy country. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Everybody's in the... No, I don't want to say that joke. I don't want to offend nobody. So I'm not going to say that. I don't want to offend nobody, but I was about to get offensive. Yeah, yeah, but you know, you know what I meant. I'm, well, I'm pretty okay. sure the part, the partners got telepathy. They know what I meant. My squad would definitely know you. I'm sure Donnell and Honeybee are like, oh, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but on the next story, man, shout out to Black News Channel who are thriving under their new president and CEO, Prince L. Hare. So this story came to us from Tallahassee.com. The timing couldn't have been more challenging for Prince L. Hare. Last July, he was appointed president and CEO of the Black News Channel, the nation's first major cable news network with an ambitious mission to provide news and perspective to the country's Black and Brown communities. After years of planning, the Tallahassee-based network launched in February just five months before Hare's arrival under the leadership of his co-founders, former U.S. Representative J.C. Watts and then CEO Bob Brilliante. The operation's primary investor is billionaire Shahid Khan, owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, among other businesses, who invested millions in the operation, including its gleaming headquarters and production center off Killer and Center Boulevard in Tallahassee. Um, so the most significant challenge that Hare faced was moving the network forward during the COVID pandemic. And uh, he basically decided um, that he would increase the uh, news network's access from its, its initial reach of 2 million households to now more than 50 million homes by leveraging his skills um, and his resources as a form of executive at CNN, Comcast, CBS, and NBC. So... Shout out to this brother, Prince O'Hare, and shout out to Black News Channel. Um, if you have it on your cable uh, news subscription, go ahead and check it out and uh, support this, man. This is dope. 
Um, yeah, man. Black King just out here kicking ass. Round of applause. Indeed. Claps. Claps Standing all ovation. Around. Salute to the King, man. Um, next story coming to us from blackamericaweb.com. Maya Shaka is the first black woman to ref an NFL game, and she's a proud HBCU grad. So this past weekend, she was the line judge during the game between the Panthers and the Jets, which aired on CBS. Um, she is a 38-year-old, and she officiated – hold on. See, this is what this is what I don't want. Get out of the way. She was the line judge. Um, she was uh, only the third woman referee in the NFL, and she is the first black woman to be refereeing an NFL game. Um, yeah, she has also officiated some preseason games and hopes that her presence on the field will inspire other women to become a involved in officiating. In a video released by the NFL, Shaka expressed how important it was for her to be able to represent women of color in the most popular sport in America. In a video released by the NFL, Maya said, proving that I can defy the odds and overcome and pretty much master a craft of sport, a sport that I didn't play, but I have a love and a passion for and hopefully that just gives someone else some inspiration and empowers them to step outside the box and do something different. So shout out to her. She uh, graduated from the Black College of Norfolk State University in hey. Virginia. So shout out to Maya. Um, and she is pretty much has dedicated most of her early career to help and improve the lives of young people. She was a physical education teacher at Renaissance Academy in Virginia Beach. And that was what she was doing before she got hired by the NFL. So she also officiated for the Pac-12 for a while. Um, and she started with the NFL officiating development program in 2014. So salute yeah. to Maya Shaka, the first black woman NFL referee, and hopefully more to come. Salute you got to another me. hometown hero. Indeed, man. VA be putting up, man. <clears throat> I keep telling you, man, VA, man, we, are, we breed legends. Um, and then our last the black story of the night. The partners are next. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Keep speaking <laughs> that shit into existence, man. And our last story of the evening. Historic moves. Angela F. Williams has been appointed to serve as president and CEO of United Way Worldwide. So this queen has become... Uh, just another in a long line of black women who are shattering glass ceilings in the nonprofit space. Angela F. Williams was recently appointed to serve as the president and CEO of United Way Worldwide, making history as the first black woman to sit at the helm of the global organization. Um, United Way put out a Twitter post that said, we are proud to announce Angela F. Williams as the next CEO of United Way Worldwide. She will be the first woman and first African-American to lead our network of nearly 1,800 local United Ways around the world. Please join us in welcoming her to the United Way family. So she's not only the first Black woman, but she's the first Black person, period. So respect to her, salute to her. Um, and yeah, man, like, we kicking ass this week, y'all. You know, we kick ass every week, but if you didn't know what we were doing, just take a look at those stories and hopefully they inspire, inform, educate, you know. And just give Salute some, to the uh, United Way. Yeah, I you know, I forgot all about them, man. Remember back in the day, you used to have the little the the United Way little uh, ring and stuff. Yes, I don't. And there was always some random fundraiser. I don't know. I just remember the ring. <laughs> I just the ring. remember that. But yes, um, so Soup we got another canceled. queen out there doing big things, and man, that is the positive black news. That you, you can, you can use.